Alright, so this is a suggestion via Discord. The name of the video is uh, Alabama is generating billions by trapping people in prison. Um, now, when I see the title itself, uh, I see uh, generating billions. I'm guessing this is most likely going to be about uh, some type of prison labor, right? Now, what I always felt weird about, at least, is that the government is paying to house them at crazy amounts of money, basically, like a day per day. You're making big money, right? You're, you're giving them terrible food, generally, right? But then charging the government copious amounts of money for said rotten, moldy food, bro, generally. That's what I, to the point where commissary um, is like the main thing that people go for, right? You're being paid per day to feed these individuals, right? But that's not the point right now. The point is okay, prison labor, right? Um, if I recall, I think we've seen something before about the topic, at least, uh, where individuals are making like pennies or like 10 cents per hour for working, but the contract is making hundreds of millions of dollars normally, right? So a lot of these states are basically double or triple dipping using individuals that have, for the most part, lost their freedom as un basically unpaid labor. Um, because again, ten cents an hour is not really relevant. But there's, but the way they're getting away from, with it, at least, is by saying we're paying them, right? Um, if that's the case, then this is going to be a very interesting video. At least I'm sure we'll learn um, a couple of new things here, guys. But either way, let's go and check it out. Well, a lot of people are calling it modern slavery. Does that feel I right? I was just about to say okay, uh, that's whoa. slavery. Okay. That's say slavery. You took it's not slavery because technically. They're paying you a wage. I think that's how that that's the argument, I think, at least. Took away the whips, but you put the paperwork. Took away the masters and you gave put them in uniform. Same difference. Same difference. It kinda appears I think she means overseers. That there is a coordinated system in order to protect the labor that's created by the prison system. Walk into a McDonald's in Alabama, and the worker flipping your McDouble could be an incarcerated person. It's a sad situation. McDonald's? Oh, they, they getting rich off us. The Alabama okay. Department of Corrections farms out incarcerated people to work at hundreds of private companies and government agencies across the state. McDonald's, Burger King, Golden Corral, Wendy's. They got a Wendy's contract right now. State Troopers Office. They'll send everybody everywhere. They'll send you everywhere. Yes, the pro pro parole office. And even though ADOC trusts the... Wait, based off the wording, are you referring to people that were released from prison and they're on parole exclusively? Is that the contract that you're talking about? Like, oh, okay, these people are out on parole, so they're going to be working... Um, for the gut for like I don't know McDonald's, right? They 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 will hire someone with a record. Is if that's what they're talking about, then obviously the um, the methodology at least uh, slightly changes uh, in my head, guys. Uh, but let's continue. These incarcerated people to leave prison every day and work alongside the general public. Many of them are still denied the chance at real freedom. I work for y'all. But when I come off a parole, you deny me. Why would you deny me? Because I got free. Because you're getting free service. This is a story about corporations Ooh, in the state dabbing. of Alabama exploiting prison labor that's and the coercive dabbing, policies they actually. use to keep its citizens trapped in servitude. It, it doesn't work. It's, it's a terrible system. If you're wondering how any of this is even legal, well, it might not be. That's what we went to Alabama to figure out. All right, let's see what this takes us, guys. So, yeah, could you just describe, like, how long you worked here? And uh, I was here 18 months. That I ran a kitchen by myself <laughs> uh, from 8 to 5 every uh, Thursday, Tuesday through Thursday. Wow. Yeah. That sounds like hard work. It was. It was. Elizabeth okay. Thomas was in the Alabama work release program for five of her 15 years in prison. So they had a comment. Oh, so work release. Okay, this is getting interesting. Does this happen in any other state? I've never actually heard of things like this happening. Um, I've heard of work release where you're you're in jail technically, but you leave jail at a certain time of the day, you go to work and you go back. Um, but I didn't know that it was for jobs like Golden Corral, Wendy's. I thought it was like it was slightly more. Combination of you know, incarcerated people and free world people. Yes. 
Yes. Did you feel like there was a difference how they treated? Oh, most definitely. Uh, we we worked longer hours. Make the work release work over or work extra days. Don't want to give you off days. Like, no, I got to eat my health. I have to get rest. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a machine. But that's how they look at you like. Okay. This is Quincy Sanders. During his nearly 17 years in prison, he worked at several restaurants, a lumber yard, and McDonald's. Like, working a real job and trying to stay being incarcerated is a very hard experience. You have to be mind strong, really. Alabama has one of the most overcrowded and deadly prison systems in the United States. Even the Justice Department found conditions there to be unconstitutional. In 2023, almost a person a day died in Alabama prisons, which is almost five times the national average. Okay, died from what? But I guess it doesn't matter, right? Uh, because all, by all definitions, the state is responsible, or the sh local sheriff uh, is responsible for keeping prisoners uh, safe, right? Um, that, you know... Or they might I guess get it doesn't beat, matter. You know, people beating Why? folks with sticks. They breaking broomsticks, making little billy clubs. People in there stabbing each other. People in there doing drugs. People in there almost about to die. They not getting you no, no nursing assistance. The nurse probably get there, you probably be dead. But ADOC offers people in prison with nonviolent misdemeanor convictions a potentially life-saving deal. If they join the work release program, they get to live in special facilities that are generally much less dangerous than regular prisons. Shouldn't they all be must, much less dangerous than regular prisons, specifically if the government is taking responsibility for the safety of the person being housed? They spend their days working in the free world without prison supervision, and they can earn 72-hour passes to visit their families at home. If you go out here and you do the right thing, uh, you get to elevate, you get to grow, you get out of this facility. But you know, what you didn't tell me is that you finna get all my money. That's what they didn't tell you. The state takes a 40% cut of every incarcerated worker's wages off the top, before taxes. Okay. Plus an additional before $5 taxes. a day for van rides to and from work, $15 a month for laundry, <laughs> and then any restitution and court fees. Right. If your check is 636, you right. might see two something, two something out of that. Right. And that's a two, that's every two weeks. And you yeah. done work 80 hours and only seen $200. Right. Like, it, oh, it's, it's, no. it, may, it, it makes you lose motivation. Cause you know, money. I mean, here, guys, here, here's the thing that it comes with this. You guys are, you guys are criminals, right? You, you, you know, you're doing the time, but I'm also not sure that it should be this predatory. Um, we have the most people in prison um, because of some of our ridiculous laws here. Like, we have the most people in prison in the world. And our population is larger than, um, let's say, China, for example, right? It's just that we imprison uh, people for things sometimes that are not um, relevant like that. But now, um, what we do need to actually do is start working on ending the concept of recidivism though right because a lot of these individuals are going to go to jail uh prison right they're going to get out of prison um they're going to realize that they, that they really can't find any type of work anyway then they're going to go back to doing exactly what put them in prison the first time and um what, what needs to happen is we need to end recidivism but that goes against the overall the prison industrial complex i think at least right i mean um if you fix the problem you won't make any more money um, so this is, I'm guessing it's the reason why we have not taken on like the Scandinavian model of actually fixing the problems of the people that uh, have committed the crimes. Get what I mean here, guys? Uh, but all right, I mean we're, we're 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 taking their money. We might as well give them something uh, you know value at least. Money motivate people, especially working. So it kind of makes you lose motivation. One estimate calculated that the state of Alabama enjoys a benefit of more than $450 million a year off of prison labor. And it's slavery all the way around the board, just slavery. And unlike free world workers, incarcerated uh, workers can't just... I still am not going to call it slavery, bro. You, you're, you're reaching. You're trying to equate things, right? But you're reaching. I'm not going to... I cannot call it slavery. I cannot. 
right? Uh, you're still allowed to get, to get an education if you so desire. Uh, you're still allowed to marry and keep your family together. If, if you know what I'm saying here, guys, it's, it sounds like a reach, but I get that they're trying to kind of elicit emotion, emotional response from the, from the listener, guys. Get a shift covered or quit. ADOC has a list of rules that all incarcerated people are expected to abide by. Rules like don't have contraband, be in your bunk at the required time, and rules like don't refuse to work. That's a rule on the books. <laughs> CJ Sandley is one of the attorneys behind a recent lawsuit filed against ADOC. The range of punishments folks can face if they get written up for refusing to work include solitary confinement, losing access to phones, tablets, visitation, access to their families and loved ones for like 30 days, 60 right. days. Oh, so they, they have to act like they're actually in jail is what you're saying? Listen, they're in jail. Being required to do more work inside the prison walls for free under threat of punishment. I want to talk to my family. I want to be a part of my family. And you're telling me that if I don't go and do what you want me to do, at these jobs, work as hard as they want me to do. If they need me seven days, you want me to go there seven days. If they if they need me 80 hours, you want me to work 80 hours. If I got if they want me to turn around and come back and do a double, you want me to get up and you want me to be available to do all this. But if I decide I'm tired, the Lord forbid if we got sick. I talked to Reginald Burrell, who was injured when an entertainment center fell on his head at the private furniture manufacturing company where he worked through ADOC. When he spoke up about it, he was fired. And you know, I confronted the JPO about it, and they shipped me to Shellsburg with extra duty, uh, taking away my privileges, and I ended up in a land. I just got assaulted and mistreated at this job, and now I'm in it in a landfill working for free for a multi-million dollar company. One of the most valuable things. Guys, I think the most important thing here is to name the companies that are actually utilizing uh, this, specifically if this is something that you care uh, like extremely deeply about, right? I mean, obviously, figure out who is you know, hiring these individuals uh, in Alabama. And the system is whatever I can do to get out early, if a work stoppage to protect myself from being abused and to speak up for myself could subject me to sanctions, I don't have to say it, but you're going to follow whatever order you're given. Chris England is a state representative in Alabama. He's leading the fight to reform the state's prison system. Okay. It is a completely broken system. It's broken everywhere in the United States of America. Completely broken. Completely the broken. folks in charge, the parole board, they don't use guidelines. There is no methodology applied to it. Alabama has some of the lowest parole grant rates in the country. And more than 90% of the time, hearing this answer. Denied, 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 be denied. Parole will be denied. If the parole board followed its own guidelines, it would grant parole in about 80% of cases. But instead, that number dropped to just 8% last year. Because of the money, I mean, you're you're basically given a scathing review of the uh, the prison uh, system in Alabama. You, you're explaining it, right? They're making copious amounts of money. Why would they want to release people? Oh no, it feels terrible. Bro. It, it, it sounds terrible. And incarcerated people in the work release program don't fare much better. I know that there are people at the Department of Corrections. They assess them, and then they say, "You are not a threat." So much so, you can leave here and go work. Some people actually go home for 72 hours on a weekend and are told, we trust you to the point where you do whatever you gotta do. We'll see you, we'll see you Monday morning, eight o'clock. That same person goes before the parole board and, and they say, you know, what you did 20 years ago is so bad we can't let you out. You are a threat to public safety but make sure you're at work tomorrow morning. A federal lawsuit claims that 235 people in the work release program were denied parole in fiscal year 2022. So if the system is operating as designed, what is the point of the system? Hmm. Um, it it's a mask. Is. It's a mask. One thing our lawsuit talks a lot about is that very clear lineage from slavery in the state 
to convict leasing and to what we've got now. And the punishment by the Department of Corrections is what our clients are challenging because that's what amounts to involuntary servitude and slavery by the state. Okay, so basically, let me go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Ugh. She's saying that it's basically the, the, the logical evolution of what slavery was in the state of Alabama. Whoa. Whoa, that's a, that's a rough one. The logical um, evolution. Crazy. After the Let's Civil go. War, the 13th Amendment abolished slavery with a key caveat. Okay. Forced labor was still allowed for people convicted of a crime. Right. And the states adopted a copycat of this federal amendment. But here's the thing. In 2022, Alabamians made a historic vote to remove this exception. The state has a new constitution. Voters overwhelmingly agreed to make our state constitution free of racist laws and language. However, right after the, the voters of the state changed the state constitution, the governor and the Department of Corrections really doubled down on the punishment for refusing to work. So the people closed the loophole and then the governor went around to open it up again, basically. Yeah, that's right. They're making too much money. Like, they're making too much money. You think they care about the people? No, I don't care about the people. You think they care about fixing a problem? No, they don't care about fixing a problem. It's similar to why, like, um, certain uh, medical uh, practitioners, let's say, guys, right? Um, they don't really want to fix problems. They don't want to give you anything that'll actually cure your issue because then you'll stop coming to them. You don't need them anymore. They won't make copious amounts of money any longer. Um, that's just what, what it sounds like. They don't want to fix an issue, bro. They're making too much money. Governor K. Ivey's executive order made encouraging or causing a work stoppage a high-level violation on the same level as <laughs> possession of a weapon, oh, that sounds like corruption. drug possession, and nah, bribery. Bro. Nah, bro. The order also cracked down on correctional incentive time, better known as good time. In some prison systems, good behavior is rewarded with what's known as good time. People can earn sentence reductions and get released from prison early. And the state legislature even changed its good time law to increase that, that form of punishment for folks who refuse to work. We're simply changing the amount of correctional incentive time or good time days that are offered. Are we increasing or are we lowering it? We are lowering them. All of this was done on the heels of this constitutional change and frankly it just it's a brazen ignoring of the will of the voters of the state and that's what that's what our lawsuit is about. And so many people want to work but they want to be paid fairly. They want to be paid a free world wage for the labor they're doing. Um, they want to be working in safe conditions. They want to be treated fairly. And they don't want to be forced to work if they don't want to, or they can't because they're sick, or they have a doctor's appointment, or they're feeling unsafe in their work and they want to change jobs. Being forced to work is crazy. One of the unique things about this state. And I mean, should you work? Yeah. I'm trying to think of the logic behind it, guys. Personally, I'm trying to think of what is the logic in it. Um, maybe like an honest, honest wage has the ability to. to, to I don't know, but I'm trying to think, I'm trying to make it make sense. Um, an honest wage most likely can make some individuals that have been locked up um, for a very long time um, understand what it is to make money legally. They'll do that, but if you're taking if the government is taking like 30% and then you're taking it 40% before taxes, you're going to send them right back to, well, that's the point, right? You're going to send them right back to doing whatever they were doing because why are they going to sit here and deal with working that hard, 80 hours for $200? Why would they, right? But that, that's the point. You're, you're setting them up for failure immediately to, for them to go right back to doing it because you're not really helping them, right? Um, really the country is that things just never end, they evolve. If your prison system is full, it, it's primarily full of black folks, black men, and you have a racial disparity in who gets released and who doesn't. I mean, there's also a disparity in, in just neighborhoods in general. Um, I can tell you this right now, uh, certain places, like majority of one group, guys, are, are, you just don't want to be honest here? Is, is that what we're doing here, sir? Um, depending on where you go, bro, 
there's certain places I refuse to go and they may be a majority of, of whatever group it is. Some places tend to be, you know, you know, a little bit nicer and some places tend to not be, um, safe in general. Um, so I think that that's most likely indicative of who's in jail more. I would, I would say pretty much based off of that almost exclusively. Um, let's just be, can we, let's just be honest with each other here. Right. Um, you know, like I know there are places in your city, you just don't want to go guys. Right. So, and that's where all the people are, are, um, coming from that are filling the jails. Can you imagine the optics of what that labor force looks like? Black people account for just over a quarter of it. Alabama's total population, right. but more than 50% of the prison population. An AL.com investigation found that black men were 25% less likely to get parole than white men. If you could maybe, maybe the crimes that were committed, but, but pretty sure though, um, if you're in jail, if you're in prison at least, right? You're probably there for similar reasons. Let's just be honest here, regardless of the, of the color of your skin. Um, if you've made it to prison, you're probably there for similar reasons. Um, so that's a weird stat, guys. Take a picture of a group of men who are working convict labor decades ago and juxtapose that next to a current labor force. It would probably look the same. That's crazy. So, what is the point of prison? Is it the creation of a cheap, controllable, and confined labor source? Yes, that's what it, that's based, every single industrial complex in the United States of America has turned into that exclusively. How can we make the people in charge the most money as humanly possible? That's what it is, yes, yes, because you're not trying to fix problems. Um, the skinny and even, this, this I'm sorry, the Scandinavian model uh, basically proves that, uh, yeah, you can fix things, but you don't want to fix things, right? You want to make money right, off the backs of other people. So, yeah, that's what it is. Or is it rehabilitation? No, it's not and rehabilitation. what does a real commitment to rehabilitation for incarcerated people actually look like? I wish they'll script that name off of that Alabama Department of Correction. I wish they'll take correction out of that and just say Alabama Department because ain't no correction. Ain't no correction, ain't no structure, ain't no discipline. You discipline me to do what you want you want me to do, not the law. Not, not, not to come back in society and be able to live off of what you taught me. That's not what's going on. If I live off I what earlier. DLC taught me, I'd still be a criminal. Because yeah, they want that imagine. paycheck. They, they, they want me to come back in tomorrow. They, they want me to. Because they keep, they money keep flowing. Right. It's no correction. We need to start correcting. We need to start, I mean, start loving. We need to start teaching. So I'm sober. All right, so here's the thing, bro. I, listen, listen, I hear what you're saying. But I think my biggest issue is, is that you do, you, you truthfully can stay out of jail. Right? Just by not committing crimes, but there are some people uh, in certain places where being tough and 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 just like being the toughest person on on the street means something apparently. Right, uh, like being the most gangster individual means something apparently. Right, and in these places, <laughs> you're basically going to end up having to do something um, to impress some other nobody. Literally, nobody doing nothing with their life. Okay. Um, someone that, you know, you're going to end up in jail for like by impressing this nobody, you're going to go and you're going to go to jail and that nobody is going to forget about you and go on with their day. Right. Like w stop caring. And a lot of, the, a lot of the crimes are almost exclusively that right? you're trying to impress someone that doesn't care about you in the first place, bro. live your own life. Right. Get out of the predicament that you are currently in. And a lot of that can be done just by changing your friend group. Right? I'm telling you, read some books, guys. Uh, learn a skill. Just a thought here, guys. I'm just I'm saying you can honestly stay out of jail. Like you don't have to. But that's the weakness. And jail is full of a lot of individuals that try to impress someone. Um, or some guy, uh, you know, doing something over a woman that is outside 
with the guy they did something to. Basically, that's how that works. Uh, or with their best friend. That's what that is, guys. With some other guy. <laughs> You're sitting in jail for, for protecting the honor of some random person, woman specifically, and she's out with somebody else. She's out. She's not in jail. You are. You're a fool. Right? And jail is full of a lot of that. I, th- I would say the overwhelming majority of men uh, are in prison because of something they did to protect some somebody who is outside doing something crazy with somebody else. But all right, guys, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.